Welcome to Understand the Math. This video is part of a series of videos on linear algebra and its applications and covers section 4.2 on the null space and column space of a matrix. I'll teach you what a null space is, what a column space is, and walk through typical example problems for both of these subspaces. Be sure to check out the link below for free guided notes that you can highlight and fill in as you watch this video. Let's begin by talking about the null space of a matrix. The null space or kernel of a matrix A is the set of all vectors x that are solutions to the equation A times x is equal to zero. If matrix A is invertible, meaning its determinant is not equal to zero, then the only solution to A times x is equal to zero is the solution x is equal to zero. If A is non-invertible, meaning its determinant is equal to zero, AX is equal to zero has solutions X is equal to zero and infinitely many solutions X is not equal to zero. Because A is an M by N matrix, X is an element of RN and the zero vector is an element of RM. All vectors X in RN map to the zero vector in RM. The null space is a subspace because it satisfies the three subspace conditions. It contains the zero vector, it's closed under addition, and it's closed under scalar multiplication. Since x is an element of Rn, where n is the number of columns of A, the null space is a subspace of Rn. When we're working with the null space of a matrix, we write the null space as NUL of A. Let's now walk through some examples involving the null space of a matrix. In example one, we'll determine if the given vector w is in the null space of matrix A. To solve this problem, we'll need to find A times w and see if it equals the zero vector. We'll take our matrix A and multiply it by our vector w. This gives us the matrix 1, 3, 5, 0, 0, 1, 4, minus 2, times our vector w, which is 1, minus 2, 1, 1. This matrix vector product gives us 1, minus 6, plus 5 in our first component, and a minus 2, plus 4, minus 2 in our second component. Our answer is then 0, 0, which is equal to the 0 vector. Because a times w is equal to the zero vector, we can say that w is in the null space of a. In our second example, we're asked to find an explicit description for the null space of a. To find an explicit description for the null space of a, we need to find all solutions x to ax is equal to zero. To do that, we'll augment a with the zero vector and put it in reduced echelon form. We'll then write x in parametric vector form. a augmented with zero is equal to this matrix. This matrix is already in echelon form, so all we have to do is put it in reduced echelon form. We'll circle our pivot, and we'll get a zero above that pivot. Our reduced echelon form matrix looks like this. To find our solution, we'll circle our pivots, and then solve for those variables. We have x1 is equal to 7x3 minus 6x4. And then we have x2 is equal to minus 4x3 plus 2x4. We're now going to write our solution as a vector. Our vector x is vector x1, x2, x3, x4 and we're gonna plug in for x1 and x2. We have 7x3 minus 6x4, minus 4x3 plus 2x4, 
And then because x3 and x4 are free variables, they go in just as themselves. We can then split this solution up. We have one vector that multiplies x3, and that vector is 7 minus 4, 1, 0. And we have a vector that multiplies x4, and that vector is minus 6, 2, 0, 1. You can think of x3 as x3 plus 0, x4, and x4 as 0, x3 plus x4. That makes it easier to see how we split it up into two vectors. The null space of matrix A is the set of all solutions x and can be written as the null space of A is equal to the span, because that's the same as a linear combination, of our two vectors, 7 minus 4, 1, 0, and the vector minus 6, 2, 0, 1. It's often common to talk about the geometric description of the null space, so let's do that real quick. The span has two vectors, so the geometric description is going to be a plane, and then each vector has four components, so our null space is going to be a plane in R4. In our third example, we're asked to show that the given set W is a vector space. W contains a set of vectors in R4 such that A minus 2B is equal to 4C, which we can write as A minus 2B minus 4C is equal to 0, and then 2A is equal to C plus 5D, which we can write as 2A minus C minus 5D is equal to 0. We can write this linear system of equations in terms of a matrix and a vector. We can write this as the matrix 1, 2, minus 2, 0, minus 4, minus 1, and 0, minus 5. And then we can multiply our matrix by our vector A, B, C, D. And it's equal to the 0 vector that has two components on the right-hand side. We can think of our vector A, B, C, D as vector X and our matrix as matrix A. Our vector x is just then a solution to ax is equal to 0, so that means x is the null space of matrix A. Because it's a null space of matrix A, we can say that it is a subspace And because A contains four columns, it's a subspace of R4. Since a subspace is itself a vector space, we can say that the set W is a vector space. I wanted to make sure to do that example because I found that students often find that example difficult to do. Let's now look at our last example. In this example, we want to find k such that the null space of A is a subspace of Rk. Because we're working with the null space, let's begin by looking at the sizes of A and x and 0. Our matrix A has three rows and two columns, so it's a 3 by 2 matrix, which means our vector x is a 2 by 1 column vector and our zero vector is then a three by one column vector. The null space is all solutions x, and our x is an element of R2, so that means that our null space is a subspace of R2. So we can say that k is equal to two. Let's now talk about the column space of a matrix. The column space or range of a matrix A is the set of all linear combinations of the columns of A. We can think of these linear combinations of the columns of A as just the span of the columns of A. If we look at the sizes of A times X is equal to B, we can see that the span of the columns of A is just all vectors B that are elements of Rm 
for which AX is equal to B has a solution. B is just a linear combination of the columns of A. Just like the null space, the column space is also a subspace because it satisfies the three subspace conditions. Since our vector B is an element of Rm, where M is the number of rows of A, the column space is a subspace of Rm. When we work with the column space of a matrix A, we'll write it as COL of A. Let's now walk through some examples involving the column space of a matrix. In our first example, we're asked to list four vectors in the column space of A. The column space of A is just all linear combinations of the columns of A, so we can write column space of A as the span, remember span and linear combinations are the same, of the columns of matrix A. So that's four, six, minus eight, 0, 4, minus 2, and then 4, 8, minus 9. We can also write this as C1 times 4, 6, minus 8, plus C2 times 0, 4, minus 2, plus C3 times our vector 4, 8, minus 9. Now let's generate four vectors from this column space. Our first vector could be maybe when C1 is equal to one and the other Cs are equal to zero. That would give us the vector four, six, minus eight. Then we could maybe set C2 equal to one and the others equal to zero. And that would give us vector zero, four, minus two. You can probably see how to do this now. For the next one, let's set C3 equal to one and the others equal to zero. So we'll just get the vector four, eight, minus nine. And then for our last vector, maybe let's let all three C's be equal to one. And we would get the vector eight, 18, and minus 19. We could have also set all of our C's equal to zero and gotten a zero vector. And we know that the zero vector has to be in the column space because the column space is a subspace. In our second example, we're asked to determine if a vector W is in the column space of matrix A. W will be in the column space of matrix A if it can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A. and we'll go ahead and label the columns of A. To see if this equation has a solution, what we'll have to do is take matrix A, augment it with W, and put it in just echelon form, not reduced echelon form, just echelon form, to see if a solution exists. Let's go ahead and do that. We have our matrix A, and we're gonna augment it with W. I'm not gonna show the steps for the reduction, but what you end up with when you reduce this matrix to echelon form is this matrix. And on our right-hand side, we have a minus a half, a two, and a zero. Remember, if you do this on your own, you might get a different matrix than what I got because the echelon form of a matrix is not unique. Since we have two pivots and one free variable in this solution, there are actually infinitely many solutions to our vector equation for W, and we can say that W is in the column space of A. For instance, W can be written as minus one half A1 plus A2. That's if we set our free variable C3 equal to zero. In our last example, we're asked to find K such that the column space of A is a subspace of R to the K. Let's begin by looking at the sizes of A, X, and B 
because the column space of A is all solutions B to AX is equal to B. A is a three by two matrix, which means that X is a two by one column vector and our vector B is a three by one column vector. Since A has three rows, our vector B is an element of R3 and our column space is going to be a subspace of R3. So our solution is K is equal to three. Be sure to check out the next video in this series where I'll teach you all about the basis for a vector space. If this video has been helpful to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. Keep believing in yourself and have a great rest of your day.